ladies and gentlemen, one thing I can honestly tell you, the stock market right now is very turbulent. And, you know, these folks, they don't like losing. So don't be surprised if they try to force it back up. And trust me, they're rigging it when you see that. I'm just telling you straight up. After looking at this thing plummet, if it just bounces up like it's a normal day, I'm just telling y'all it's rigged. They're rigging it because they're trying to recruit all that $6 trillion that was lost. But I don't know how a recession can be avoided at this point. I really don't. And I think it's going to come a lot faster than anybody has anticipated. You know, and initially earlier this year, they kept trying to say there was no recession in sight. Ladies and gentlemen, don't believe the hype. If this market drags the way that it did last week, you are looking at a recession and that recession is going to come very soon. So this came out in the Washington Post. Recession fears grows as Wall Street investors brace for a wild week for stocks. So last week was treacherous for this country. Six trillion dollars lost. A bulk of it was lost by the U.S. March 1st, 2020, Paul Shank lost about $20,000 last week after the coronavirus fears caused the biggest weekly decline for U.S. stocks since the financial crisis. Actually, actually they're past that. They, they're just not going to admit it. What happened last week surpassed the financial crisis of 2008. His wife, Susan, asked him multiple times a day if it was wise to keep any of their money in equities. To watch 10% of your stock portfolio disappear in a week is pretty scary, said Paul Shank, a retiree in Albuquerque. To us, it's a lot of money. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to remember they purposely locked black people out of the stock markets in this country. They didn't want us involved in it. The last time Americans saw such sweeping and shockingly fast market losses was during the financial crisis, and those memories are still fresh in many people's minds. Last week, Dow Jones industrial average plunged 12.4% or 3,583 points as investors fear and uncertainty about the potential economic fallout from the coronavirus became increasingly ten intense. Yeah, well, they're going to be on edge all week, <laughs> this week as well. But like I said, you know, just keep your eyes on it. They're going to try everything they can to force the market back up, you know, it, 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 it's inevitable, y'all. They're going to do this because they want to see if they can recoup even a, a little bit of that money back. But this thing is spreading around the U.S. and the globe right now. So, you know, it doesn't matter what they do. They're going to still be in the loss. They're going to be in the red again. There's growing concern that the steep market losses and mounting death toll will trigger broader alarms, prompting American consumers to rein in their spending beyond canceling vacations and cruises. For a decade, consumer spending propped up not just the U.S. economy, but the global economy, keeping factories around the world humming and giving U.S. business owners optimism. But the momentum of fear is a powerful force in the markets and the broader economy. About half of Americans have money invested in the stock market, often a retirement plan that baby boomers are now tapping. And even those without market exposure are often influenced by big drops. Corona 
has also caused significant supply chain disruptions of toys, medical equipment, auto parts, and smartphones from China. Oh, it's way bigger than that. <laughs> it's way bigger than that. You know, the FDA is already telling people to brace yourself for shortages of meds. And it wasn't until last week that I found out 44 pharmaceuticals are in Hubei County, you know, the same location where Wuhan is in China. 44 pharmaceutical companies are there that makes medicine and those medicines come to the U.S. And those people have been in quarantine now for quite some time. They're not back working. So that's why you're going to see medical shortages on, they said 150 different medications can be hit. Could be more than that. None of which will be easy to smooth out even if the virus ebbs within a month or two. The twin blows to consumer confidence and supply chains have significantly raised the chance of a recession, according to economists. I don't think it can be avoided. I just don't, you know. And ladies and gentlemen, look at how closely those people work at the U.S. stocks. Those people are elbow to elbow every day. You think someone's not going to walk in there with the coronavirus and impact the people that work on Wall Street? Think again. It's common. The odds of a recession are roughly a coin toss, and that's exceptionally high. Mm-mm-mm. Wow. In discussions with a dozen families and financial advisors around the country, nearly all said nerves were high, but most of the fear is concentrated in the markets. Calls to Schwab Intelligent Portfolio Service Team were up all week, spikes, uh, spiking more than 115% on Thursday and Friday compared to a typical day. Schwab declined to say how many investors were selling stocks. I bet they were hit with a bunch of phone calls. Some financial advisors said their clients were inquiring about whether they should think about buying stocks, which were widely viewed as overpriced at the start of 2020. More often, callers were looking for reassurance. Well, how can somebody reassure you when we got a virus that we never dealt with before that's highly contagious? What reassurance were you looking for? And how can they reassure you that your money is still going to be there after $6 trillion was lost? Boy, these people need a lot of coddling and hand-holding. After many dinner table discussions, the Shanks are staying in the market for now. The couple has a modest amount of their portfolio in stocks with the rest in bonds and other lower risk investments. But like many Americans, they are watching the situation closely. It's just a scary time. At some point, it will scare me enough that I pull out, said Paul. Financial advisor Jamie Cox of Richmond was flooded with calls and said nearly everyone had the same question. Is this a repeat of the financial crisis? It's a delicate question to answer. One likely scenario is that the coronavirus will be a short-lived crisis with a health impact similar to the flu. But it's not like the flu. That, that's really an unrealistic answer. You don't know. It, this thing don't look short-lived to me. It's still spreading. an economic impact that slows growth for the first half of the year and then rebounds in the latter half. History has to provide some guidance. Okay, I, I, I don't know. We've gone through influ, uh, influenza and other diseases, yeah, but <laughs> this is different. 
Okay. This is not like influenza and other diseases, you know? So, I mean, let these people stay in their unrealistic world. That's the way I see it. You know, time will show them that this virus is here to stay. You watch. I mean, many of us that are in the truth, we know what's going on. But these folks are scratching their heads and running around. Oh, well, should we keep our money in or should we take our money out? JP Morgan has been telling clients growth will slow to 1.25% in the first half of 2020, but most of the depressed sales will be made up later on. Okay, you again, you're putting something out there that you absolutely cannot prove. I'm telling people this is not anywhere close to being um, indicative of the 2008 scenario. Well, I'm looking at something contrary to what this person said. This is a demand and supply shock that is very temporary in a strong economy. You lost $6 trillion. You're just not looking so strong right now. Mm -mm -mm. There's a chance the coronavirus spirals into something sinister and long lasting. The coronavirus, which first emerged in China, has spread to 60 countries at a rapid clip with many parts of China, South Korea, Japan, and Italy. In a virtual standstill, the public health crisis is increasingly hurting the global economy, which could make it harder to recover. Exactly. You know, that's the only thing in the article that actually makes sense, <laughs> you know? Okay, so it's just talking about some Americans still feel positive about this. And uh, the virus is now in the U.S. Uh, what happens to the number of cases and fatalities from here is likely to drive sentiment as Main Street grapples with what it all means said Peter Atwater, president of Financial Insights. Consumer confidence has wavered in the past stock market declines, such as the end of 2018, when the market fell nearly 20%, but confidence rebound quickly as the market climbed again beyond stocks. Another key driver of sentiment and spending is how secure people feel in their jobs so far Job growth remains strong, but many are watching the travel and restaurant industries for signs of furloughs and layoffs. Yeah, people are not going to dine out. You know, people are not dining out. And my question is, you know, they have not put a lot of information out on, um, you know, sanitizing places. I, I don't hear any of that here in America. Even if you feel it doesn't work, I don't hear anybody out here trying to sanitize places. You know, I haven't heard that out of the Chinese restaurants. I haven't heard that out of the American restaurants. I haven't heard that in any of the industries. You know, the only thing they seem to be concerned about is money. And like I said, even if you think it don't work, do it anyway. You know, do it anyway. But they're just, oh, well, we're not making money. We're going to have to close. <sighs> mm -mm -mm. So it, it, they're just talking about, you know, the infection from the Royal Caribbean cruise. And, you know, they just let those people go. All right, the family is concerned about the coronavirus spread in Italy, but they also worried about the possibility being quarantined on their return and losing a month's pay. See, again, got money on your mind. Mm -mm -mm. So ladies and gentlemen, please tell me what you think. You know, these fears are not going to go away. You know, it, it's just not. And as long as this thing is spreading with no cure in sight, I just don't see how the market is going to stay up. 
you know, not unless there's a lot of rigging going on, which I know they're going to try to do. I know they're going to try to rig the market because these folks are scared of losing that kind of money. You know, they've been living high on the hog in this country for centuries and they don't want that to go away. So even if they got to rig up a system to keep their uh, thirsty lives going, that's what they're going to do. But it's going to all be for naught, y'all. I really believe that. I, I don't believe there's anything right now that points to this market jumping back up and staying um, at a normal pace. I think those days are gone. Look, I never in my life heard corporations come out and say, we're not going to make money this year. Until about a week and a half ago, I never heard that from corporations, even in 2008. I never heard corporations come forward to say something like that, ever. And you look at the CEOs, they're running for the hills right now. They're quitting in droves. Because you know what? The inevitable is here, y'all. It is here. There's no coming back from this. You know, once the Most High curse a nation, he's not reversing that. That's never going to be reversed. This is not short term. You can choose to believe that it is. Have at it. Just because you choose to believe it, it doesn't make it true. So, ladies and gentlemen... Please tell me what you think. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.